Good morning. I'm Theatre Works USA's Artistic Director, Barbara Pasternak. My pronouns are she, her. I have blondish, longish hair, very long bangs that hang over my large black glasses. I am wearing a gray denim button-down shirt, and I'm speaking to you from Manhattan, the land of the Lenape. I ask you to join me in acknowledging the Lenape community, their elders, both past and present, as well as future generations. And I'm delighted to welcome you to Think Mank Talk Back, a panel for Patsy, mm -hmm. moderated by Sean Joseph Chu from the Honolulu Youth Theater. And in fact, the event today is coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii. Before the pandemic, TheaterWorks USA's productions reached over a million young people each year providing high caliber theater experiences and arts enrichment opportunities to schools and communities across New York City and North America. And until we're able to safely produce theater for live audiences, we remain committed to doing what we can to keep theater accessible, relevant, and present in the lives of young people, educators, and families across the country. We're equally committed to providing programming that is based on a range of ideas and perspectives, which promotes a greater understanding and respect for diversity, equity, and inclusion, which combats bigotry, racism, and injustice, and gives voice and expression to the broadest range of histories and experiences. The stories we tell represent the diversity of the audiences we serve. This event today is part of an exciting new series, Who Tells Your Story, currently streaming on TWUSA TV. We have commissioned artists from traditionally underrepresented groups and asked each to select a historical figure, someone who inspires them, and to write and produce a music video sharing that person's story. And in this case, we reached out to Honolulu Youth Theater's Sean Joseph Chu, who chose Patsy Mink. Sean Joseph Chu is an actor, composer, and writer based in Honolulu, dedicated to stories that are born from and belong to Hawaii. A company actor employed at the Honolulu Theater for Youth, he has helped devise Shaka, the story of energy in Hawaii, the musical The Adventures of Pinocchio, a touring educational show about reducing and reusing and recycling, Opala, Remix, and most recently Stories of Oceana. His work can be seen on the highway currently broadcasting on Hawaii News Now. In the spring of 2015, Sean was accepted into the songwriting masterclass with Lynn Ahrens and Stephen Flaherty as part of the Dramatist Guild Fund's Traveling Masters program. That same year, Sean's song Hilo Moon won second place in the Hawaii Music Songwriting Festival Songwriter Competition on Oahu. Sean regularly performs as a member of Improv HI, doing improvised musical comedy with his improv buddies. Uh, Sean's plays have been selected for readings and virtual productions at Playbuilders of Hawaii and Kumu Kahua Theater. He was accepted into the inaugural lab Hawaii Weekend uh, Ideation Program in theater and is excited to be one of the three playwrights accepted into the 2021 Creative Lab Hawaii Playwrights Immersive Program. He's a member of ASCAP, the Dramatist Guild, the Playwrights Development Committee at Kumu Kauahu Theater and the Consortium of Asian American Theaters and Artists. Let's welcome Sean. Take it away. Aloha, mahalo, Barbara. Thank you, Theater Works USA. Thank you, everyone, for doing this project. Thank you for allowing me to be creative. Uh, so I want to start the show just acknowledging the land that I'm on. And um, I this is uh, Hawaii, uh, traditional lands of the Kanaka Maoli. And I think one special way, I think music is a huge part of our culture. So I wanted to do a land acknowledgement by singing this song that uh, a lot of us growing up here uh, would sing. And this song is about just recognizing how much we love Hawaii and um, the children that live there. E Hawaii e ku'u e ku'u home Ah. Uh -huh. 
Havai i alohai E hau o liena o pi o Havai i mei O lie, o lie Mai nā he ahe matani e pā mai nei Mau ke aloha no Hawaii Mau ke aloha no Hawaii And before we go on, I just want to take just a second to acknowledge not just the people and culture of Hawaii, but I think take a moment to acknowledge the huge um, steps we forward we have come as um, those who identify as Asian American and especially with current events, I think I would like to take a moment just to take a breath um, to acknowledge all BIPOC peoples and cultures um, that make America what it is today. So join me in taking a breath in and out. And now, Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Think Mink Talk Back, a panel for Patsy Mink. And we have some special guests today. The first guest uh, is a friend of mine named Kimberly Basford. And here's a biography. Kimberly Basford combines her love for storytelling with her background in journalism to bring the underrepresented stories of girls and women to the world. She directed and produced the documentaries Winning Girl, 2014, The World Channel, Women Make Movies, Java Films, Patty Mink, Ahead of the Majority, 2008, PBS Women Make Movies, and Cheerleader, 2003, HBO Family Documentary Educational Resources, and was a producer on two national PBS documentary series, Unnatural Causes, Is Inequality Making Us Sick, 2008, and The Meaning of Food, 2005. She has garnered numerous honors for her work, including film festival audience awards and grand jury prizes, a DuPont Columbia Award, Student Academy Award, and Cinna Golden Eagles. Her work has been supported by the Sundance Institute, Women in Film, Film Independent, CNN, ITVS, Center for Asian American Media, Asian American Documentary Network, ADOC, Pacific Islanders in Communications, and CPB PBS. She has also served on juries for the Hawaii International Film Festival, Ohina Short Film Showcase and Guam International Film Festival and is a member of ADOC, Brown Girls Doc Mafia, Documentary Producers Alliance, Film Fatale, Gotham Film and Media Institute and Women in Film. Kimberly holds a BA in Psychology from Harvard University and a Master of Journalism from the University of California, Berkeley. She owns Making Waves Films LLC, a documentary production company in Honolulu, Hawaii. Please join me in welcoming Kimberly Basford. Hi, hi, Sean and everybody. It's awesome to be here. Thank you for the warm and kind introduction. Now we're gonna dance. Yeah, 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 yeah. dancing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the, the Think Mink song stuck in my head, like ever oh. since I heard it the first time, so. That was, the, that was the design. That was, uh, I was trying to make it uh, planted in your brain. So um, yes. Kim, yeah. Kim, it was great working with you. You, you helped a lot with um, just providing resources and just being a great uh, collaborator. Can you tell us, tell the audience, tell me, I'm curious, like what, what was your first um, interaction, I guess, with Patsy Mink or how did you hear about her? What was your first, uh, you know, impression? Oh. Yeah, for sure. So it's hard to know when I first heard about her because I was born and raised here. So I definitely grew up knowing her name, right? Because she was our congresswoman. She also served in other offices. And so, yeah, she was just a name I knew. Um, but it, honestly, it really wasn't until she passed away in 2002 that I really became aware of her story. And that's when I was just struck by her. I mean, I was struck that she was such a pioneer, such a trailblazer. You know, the very first not just Asian American woman to serve in Congress, but first woman of color period to serve in Congress. Um, and like, why didn't I know that? And then, you know, reading more and reading that she was the co-author of Title IX, which is like such a landmark 
um, gender equity legislation, something that I have benefited from and that all of us really, anyone who came after Title IX, right, who was in school after, um, has all benefited from. It's changed the landscape of education um, and athletics and careers for women. And so just realizing that like she had a hand in it, not just a hand, but she was the driving force behind it was amazing. And then I was also just tickled by the fact that she ran for president in 1972 <laughs> and I had no idea. So, I mean, all of these things came together and I was just personally inspired by her story when I read about her, um, you know, when she passed away. But it wasn't until a couple of years later that I started working on a film about her. But um, yeah, I, I think it was just, I was struck by her. I wanted more people to know about her. Like I'm sure when you first heard her story too, and just kind of also grateful, right? For the work that she did and, and hopefully realizing that we all stand like on the shoulders of those who come before. And also like we gain inspiration from knowing their struggles and their fights. And that hopefully that gives us strength to do, you know, to carry that, that, that fight forward. Yeah, for sure. And you know, like, I, um, one of the other videos that was produced for Theater Works USA, you know, it's talking about not knowing and we should know these things about, you know, our, our, um, our kupuna, our ancestors, or those who have come before us. Um, one of the other videos produced by Theater Works USA uh, was by an artist named AJ Raphael, who's based in California, singer songwriter. And he, his song was about Larry Itliong, someone I didn't know about. And like being, you know, I'm like eight different ethnicities and like being part Japanese, you know, like like learning about Patsy Mink was very empowering, but also learning about Larry Itliong and his work with um, the farmers. And, you know, it was just like, man, I, 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 I really want that to be known more amongst, you know, in like our history books and just, just in general about like, these are people we should be celebrating, right? Um, for sure. Yeah. And I, I've heard of Larry's name as well. And um, yeah, and you know, it's like, who writes the history, right? And if we don't come and, and document their stories, then it is lost, right? And so I think there's so much value in this initiative and, and what we're doing. And I'm so, I love that you chose Patsy Mink. I mean, I did this film you know, 2008. And I feel like this new music video is going to sort of breathe new life into, into um, her legacy. And more and more people are learning about her, you know, even today. So I agree. Yeah. Um, so like, when I was trying to figure out who to write about, um, I, you know, I landed on, I chose Patsy because of all the people that I saw or was doing research on, I, it was the only person for some reason, I just had a visceral reaction to actually watching the, the trailer for your documentary, because it was just, it was, so it's an effective trailer, <laughs> but also it was, um, for me personally, it reminded me of uh, the very strong women in my life that raised me, you know, like this, this ukulele, um, this was, my great grandma's ukulele, um, and my my one of my grandma's uh, my grandma Eloise was just a very strong-willed uh, hapahawi uh, woman, and she was very much about you know doing things the right way. You know, she told me like don't don't do bad things. She was very much a moralist, but she's also just very kind and loving and. Um, it, there's like resonance for me when I um, saw your trailer. And I'm wondering, you know, you, you, you got impressions of Patsy and what does it mean for you? Um, what does she mean for you on the, like, I guess the personal side, once you got to know her more and doing the documentary? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I think when I was doing the film, I was so drawn to her story because at the time, this was, let's see, this was after, you know, right after graduate school, I was still forming sort of my political identity. And I was just really drawn to her, her form of politics, you know, the fact that she was sort of this unapologetic progressive, this liberal, at a time when that was even more of a word you didn't really use than it is today. Um, and that she really saw government as a way to help people and to lift people up. Um, I think I, I just really found that inspiring. And I think, you know, I resonated with that. That's sort of what I hope 
government can do. Um, and so, yeah, she was she was someone in learning her story it helped me sort of form my own political identity. Um, and I carry that with me. And then, yeah, just, just how resilient she was. I mean, making a film, as you know, it has ups and downs and it takes a lot of time and energy. And it took me four years to make, to make, make um, the documentary. Um, and then I just kind of like would always kind of hear her in the back of my mind about how, you know, you, um, you know, you fall, fall down seven times, get up eight, kind of an idea of like, you just keep going. And, and the fact like she didn't always win her elections, right? She had losses. And I think that's something that like we can all connect to because we all have like, you know, down moments in our life, but to be able to kind of like pick yourself up and like keep going with it and, and, and keep working toward that goal. I was just, I found that like really personally inspiring. Um, and yeah. I continue to do so today. It's like, oh, okay. You know, like Patsy, Patsy had, you know, struggles and she kept going. So I can, I can as well. Yes, I think the value of enduring and perseverance, um, it's uh, sometimes I have a lot of, uh, you know, as they say, first world problems and I kind of get distracted or like, oh, I, I don't have food in my fridge. I'm going to go to the fast food place, you know, um, but like persevering, like you said, like making a film, like people, if you haven't made a film or if you haven't really studied um, the the in the 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 sheer it's just a, like an odyssey the adventure the journey of making a film is just a long term game and I think like that like you were saying like I think Patsy was very much about that thinking about future generations you know I was talking with Calvin who's going to talk with us later on today about when you're when you think about public figures or politicians or um, you know. A president or something like that all you some, on the surface you just see them like talking you know nice words or whatever or smiling and you know, kissing babies whatever they're doing but behind them is a huge team of people that are making whatever their vision come alive and it's it's not just this one person it's a whole community um working together to try to make change and affect change and um I think that's there's something beautiful in our art forms, right? Like 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 uh, like a public figure that we we do as artists, as filmmakers, as theater, as a theater artist. Um, that's really cool. Um, one 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 more thing I, I'm curious about is, as as a mother, what is what is what is what do what does Patsy's work mean to you? I guess as 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 an artist and a mother, I suppose. Um, yeah, I mean, she was about um, opening up opportunities for everyone, right? And not just women, but a lot of her work focused on women. And I think I do the same. I try to do the same with my kids um, and in my work as well. But um, yeah, making sure that, you know, like when, you know, we're, we're surrounded by media today and my kids even more so than we were when we were growing up. And, you know, when we see films where like, there aren't that many girls who are characters in the film, like we talk about it. Um, and I feel like that builds on, you know, what Patsy went through and, you know, others like her who were the first to say like, hey, there is like, this is not, there's not parody here and there's a discrepancy and we need to correct that. And I try and do that in my own life with my family, like point things out, talk to them, have discussions. Um, and hopefully kind of open their world up about, about it. So it's not invisible. Like for so many of us, it's invisible, right? We don't see the sort of structural inequality that exists in the world until maybe we're a lot older. Um, mm -hmm. And some people don't even really see it at all. Um, but I think, um, I think Patsy saw it, she experienced it and then she tried to change it from the inside out, like through politics and through legislation. And I try and do it through films. And as a mom, I do it every day, just, you know, whenever, whenever I see it and I have the opportunity um, without trying to crush their spirits. <laughs> <Too much. laughs> because but, you know, yeah. I want them growing up believing they, that they can do anything and they can, but then like you have to like slowly introduce the idea of, wow, there is like, you know, structural inequality um, yeah. as well. And that they have to kind of maybe fight against that. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. That's beautiful that, you know, trying to take these big lofty ideas and make it practical. And I think it's, 
it's very much like something whatever you know you believe or your politics i think we can all agree like we just trying to teach other people like let's just fight fair or play fairly you know on a playground you know like like your kids or my friend olive who's going to come on soon like they understand if we're playing on a and for recess you know let, there's some ground rules that we should all adhere to and if there are rules established in in the classroom or our society, we should try to adhere to them if we agree to be a part of this um, society, I guess, you know? So, yay, thanks, Kim. So you're not going anywhere. I don't know why I said thank you. I guess no, I'm just no, thankful I'm for your presence. <laughs> well, I'm just thankful to you as well, you know, to let me come on board and, and help and collaborate. I mean, just being along for the ride, it's amazing, your talent and creativity, I mean, I think, yeah, I think people are going to be blown away by this. Like those who even know Patsy's story, it just gives so much new energy. And I also love that the target audience are, are young people. I mean, like kids, right? Like my kids age, um, which is great. Cause like my film wasn't necessarily targeted at kids. So um, yeah, like you're going to be responsible for getting her name out to them and they'll grow up knowing about her and, and, and about the issues that she stood for. So yep. thank you. I'm happy to be of service. Now, imaginary drum roll, our next guest is Calvin Tamura. Calvin is a puppeteer artist and he is Patsy Mink's cousin. Calvin, welcome to Think Mink Talk Back. Boo -boo. Hi, hi, Sean, how are you doing? I, I'm 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 good. I'm a little uh, nervous. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's normal. That that keeps you on your toes. Yep. Yeah. Calvin, can you can you talk to us? Tell us a story about um, growing up. You you're telling me about helping with Patsy with uh, her campaigns and what was that like? It was um, interesting because. It was a challenge suddenly that you got presented with, oh, we're gonna go knock on doors and pass out pamphlets. Oh, we're gonna stand on the street corner and wave so wave signs and wave at people uh -huh. as they drive by. And, and how, how old were you at this time? Uh, well, the pamphlets be, before waving signs, I was about eight. Eight years old. Yes. And um, you know, you walk up to a door and you knock on the door, and the person behind the door doesn't know what they're getting into. And I'm saying, "Will you vote for my cousin?" And usually the door just went. So oh. it was oh. kind of early training for you know, like disenfranchisement, and you just went, "Okay, <laughs> that's all right. I'll yep. go to the next door." Yeah, you're you're ready for um, auditioning. For uh, it prepared you if you ever wanted to be an actor. You just uh pass out pamphlets uh right. that prepares yes. you yes lots of lots of unusual things happen because i was related to patsy um it's you know fundraisers um stuffing envelopes um all kinds of unusual things that you're saying oh i can do that and i turned out to be i shouldn't say this i turned out to be a really good envelope stuffer it yeah. was a, a good thing that. that I could learn how to do that. Um, but it was a interesting life to live because of Patsy being my cousin. I got to do things that other people really didn't get to do. Um, I went, went to visit her in um, Washington, D.C., and she arranged for my sister and I to get the the interior department tour which meant you got on a on a van and they took you up to the lincoln monument and you parked up right where the stairs was and walked up and you were right there and all the monuments in washington dc i got to go to because of that tour it was wow. quite fun and unique because you, you know everybody else is standing in line and you eat you can't <laughs> say it but you get to cut in line <laughs> Well, you're kind of VIP. You were there for a purpose, right? So, well, sometimes yes, and sometimes it was just pleasure. Um, <laughs> you know, and you did things that, because of Patsy's connection, you did things that 
I I got to go to Bill Clinton's second inauguration. It was wow. Yeah, it was very fascinating to be in this ballroom with, you know, people around you, and you're going, oh wow, look at this. How yeah. did I get here? I'm you know from the middle of the Pacific, and I'm here in this this place. It's very yeah. strange. Yeah, I, I remember you telling me about your going to DC and uh, the envelope stuffing and the or helping organize things. It's interesting because I like you, you, you had all these opportunities, which are great, but then also like, I feel like, you know, as, as a family member, I think anyone can relate to like, okay, like, you know, you have to, you have to help your cousin, you know, or help your mom, help your yeah. dad, like, let's do the thing, you know, you got to support your family. And sometimes it's not, it's not always fun in games. Sometimes you're stuffing envelopes, which you're good at now, but right. um, that's the, that's not always the fun thing to do, but it's, it is, um, it is one way of showing support and, and, and love for the Ohana, for the family, right? Um, right. Yes, it was, it, it spread to different parts of your life that you weren't thinking it was going to spread to, um, you know, we cooked stew so that we could have a stew fundraising dinner. Um, uh, at one point, she wanted me to come to DC and do a fundraiser at the DC building. And it was like, okay, what am I supposed to do? I had to peel the pineapple, having never peeled a pineapple before. I had to make flower arrangements, you know, um, cut sashimi, um, mm. it, you know, it was, it was just something that you don't expect to do, but suddenly it was thrust upon you and you get to do it. Yeah. Um, so you had, you, at the time you didn't slice a pineapple before. Did you ever slice sashimi? No, <laughs> no, I have, you know, you, you watching something on a cooking channel from the yeah. pan plane. Oh, oh, oh no. that's how you do it. Yeah. Right? For for our audience, if you've never had sashimi, it's a uh, just raw fish sushi without the the seaweed and the rice, which is great with soy sauce. But um, that's oh no, I mean it's great you got to learn. But like usually, if you're gonna get sushi or sashimi, you're gonna ask someone, you know, who, who has experience. Right. But that was it's a great opportunity to learn. Yes, yes, and and she was a. In many ways, she was a very nice cousin, you know, always thought about everybody in the family, um, um, constantly being around as often as she could. I mean, she lived in Washington, mm -hmm. DC, but, you know, she came back quite often right, right. Um, and, and did political things as well as family things. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a... Um... Living in Hawaii, I think sometimes it's hard. I'd imagine I'm not a parent, but um, um, and I live by myself. But like a lot of people work multiple jobs, and sometimes it's hard to the line between work and play or family. It gets kind of fuzzy sometimes because there's so many demands on us here, and um, sometimes unfortunately things fall through the cracks. And um, it's nice that you know. Patsy and other legislators and leaders like her were thinking about those who may have maybe we people just forget about because we're so busy sometimes in our society. Right. Um, Calvin, um, you know, we 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 met <laughs> not because of this the Patsy Mink connection. I I, I met you primarily uh, from a Zoom meeting about puppetry. Yes. And uh, can you tell 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 a little story? I I just as an artist, um, what was what was that like? Uh, just your puppetry journey in in so many words, because I find it fascinating um, how people like like me and like Kim, like we we all have different journeys. It's not just like you know people think of an artist and we're just like, oh, I'm gonna brood and think in my corner and make cool stuff and then. People will appreciate it, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of, it, everyone's journey is different. It's not like we all start that way. And like, there's right. some magical light that 
a God gives us. It, it, we all have different journeys, and I, 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 I'd like, I like to hear some of your journey and for our audience too. Well, I went to the University of Hawaii, and I was an ed major, so I was trying to do all the ed courses that I could do um, at. Kennedy Theater, there was a woman who just started there and she taught a creative drama class. And I took the class and I really enjoyed it. And her second class that she taught was puppetry. So I went and did puppetry. Um, suddenly it that in a, in a very bizarre way opened up a whole set of, of life experiences that got me to go to um, Dresden, East Germany, Moscow. Um, I went to Washington DC for an international puppet festival. Um, and the puppet organization, Puppeteers of America, had festivals every year, uh, one on the East Coast, one in the Central, and one on the West Coast, and then they would recycle backwards. And so I, you know, I went to um, San Luis Obispo, I went to St. Louis, I went to just to do puppets. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I one more question I and I'm gonna throw to Kim too is for your for the both of you for your respective art forms. What is something you really what do you, what is something that you love about it, I suppose? What is something you really love about puppetry and filmmaking? Well, it got me to do all these things that I would never have done, you know, um, experienced any of this. Um, and right now it's crawling slowly back into my life and I'm doing puppetry at HTY, Honolulu Theater for Youth. And um, very soon we're gonna be taping a couple of uh, episodes of this show that they're, they're actually showing on local television. Mm -hmm. Kim, how about you? Um, for me, so I'm a documentary filmmaker and I feel like with every project, I just learn so much, like a whole new world opens up with every project. Um, and so I just, I love learning. I feel like I'm a lifelong learner and with filmmaking, you're always learning, um, but learning about new subjects and really um, kind of broadening your own understanding of humanity in the world. And so I just, yeah, I love it. I mean, I, I learned so much about Patsy and politics, local politics, national politics, legislation, uh, my other films, same thing, just whatever it is, it's like a whole, it's a whole learning experience. So I, I love that. Yeah, I think all, all the different art forms, um, for me, you know, I've touched on puppetry working at the theater and, um, and now filmmaking because of the circumstances of the past year. And um, as an actor, well, primarily I was a, a composer. I've play, been playing piano. That was my first art thing. I think it's interesting for me to create worlds, I suppose, with, with nothing really. <laughs> like We create these, these kind of dimensions with our imagination and you know kids understand that and I think sometimes we forget about the power of words and the human imagination and I think leaders like Patsy understood the power of words and the need right the need and she had the conviction to be like we need to this needs to change and we're we're better than this we can we can do better let's let's shoot for that you know so with that being said, um, thanks for chatting. And now we're gonna stop chatting because we're going to watch, let's watch the music video. Our challenge is that that future is in our hands. I enjoy teaching. You know, children are like clean sheets of paper. The real challenge to us is to help fill those pages with values, our moral values, our ethical values, and the highest vision we have for the kind of nation we want to be. Think, mink, don't blink, or bad night. Let's fight fear for 
all of us is you and I Think me, that's what I have to say I fight for what's right with aloha That's the way to think A few years back, way back in the day A Maui born gal had something to say A sansei, third generation Japanese American, she experienced discrimination So she caused the creation through Persuasion of Title IX That's I to the X, a law that's mighty fine Now here's the text um, No person in the United States shall on the basis of sex be excluded From participation in, be denied the benefits of Or be subjected to discrimination Under any education program Or activity receiving federal financial assistance Uh, that was a law, y'all Title IX was instrumental in paving the way for women's equality in sports programs and beyond. And in 2002, the law was retitled the Equal Opportunity yeah. Education Act in honor of Patsy Mink. Think, think, don't blink or bad an eye. Let's fight fair for all of us. It's you and I. Think, me, that's what I have to say. Fight What's right with her heart? That's the way it is. Patsy was born in Pa'ia Moe. Cane fields raised in the country In school she fought against segregation Questioning racism in our nation She worked in D.C., worked hard to defend Her neighbors and family and her friends Questions of conscience, of morality She opposed to Congress to address the need The need to protect the most vulnerable Left out of the law, fighting the status quo For kids and women that want to learn more She fought for peace, anti-Vietnam war Her strong voice is echoed Wing to this day, speaking truth to power in her own way. Decades on decades of the daily grind through law, her legacy is left behind for you and I. Think me, don't play or bad eye. Let's fight fair for all of us, yes, you and I. No, cause there's a better way Yeah, yeah, yeah Think of me If you just think me Could you maybe think me Yeah, would you, could you Think about it, think it out Think me You have to remember that so many of the decisions that came about was because people got interested and involved and said, wait a minute, you're not going to do it this way and things turned around That's what this whole thing is about it can't be better. Maybe not for me. I can't change the past. But I can certainly help somebody else in the future so they don't have to go through what I did. I was the first woman of color, which is what I prefer people to remember. The first woman of color in the entire United States House of Representatives. Oh yeah.
Oh, yeah. now I just want to dance. But that's like not what we're... <laughs> you liked it? All right. That's our next guest. Next on the list. From Ottawa Elementary, age seven, first grade, Olive Brennick. Hi. And our next guest, Jonathan Basford, age nine, fourth grade, Puno School. And with him, Nalia Basford, age seven, first grade, also from Puno School. Everyone, give them a hand. Woohoo! All right. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. I feel happy to be here. Oh, I feel happy that you get to be here too. How are you? How are you? How are you doing, Olive? I'm good. Yeah. How are you doing, Jonathan and Nalia? Good. Yeah. yeah. So I heard y'all have some questions, huh? Yes. Okay, let's go round robin. Let's do this. Let's start with uh, who wants to go first? Me. But if anyone else wants to go first, that's fine. <laughs> Very generous of you, sir. Uh, let's start with Olive and then we'll go to the Bassfords. So, Olive, what is the question you have? What was Patsy Mink most proud of and why? Hmm. This is the realm of speculation. <laughs> we have to think about that, Olive. What do you, <laughs> Calvin, what do you think? Kim, what do you guys think? That's hard to say. I would say that it, her family. I mean, her daughter's in Washington, D.C., um, writing books. Um, mm -hmm. She had a loving husband that, that they took care of each other a great deal. So I would say her family, she's what she's most proud of. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go to Jonathan. What's the question you have? Why did you choose Patsy Mink as the main character? <laughs> Why did I choose Patsy Mink? Um, so I chose Patsy Mink when I was um, looking for someone to write the song about. I had a bunch of different options, including some people from the Hawaiian monarchy. Um, but then when I, saw, when I saw your mother's trailer for her documentary film, I started crying. <laughs> and uh, I... I, Patsy, um, her personality just reminded me of my grandma um, because she was very much like, do, do good things, come on. <laughs> and uh, it was just kind of, it reminded me of my grandma and, and I was just impressed. And I didn't know a lot of the things that she did, John, Jonathan. So mm -hmm. when I did learn more, um, I just thought, wow, more people need to hear about this. So that's why I chose Patsy. Thank you for your questions. Yeah. Nalia, how about you? Do you have a question? Yes. Why should kids know about Patsy Mink? Why should kids know about Patsy Mink? Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. I, just, I went into meditative mode. Um, uh, I think, I think, and Calvin and Kim, you can chime in too. I think kids should know about Patsy Mink because she fought very hard for not just women, but also for children. Um, and I don't know all the specifics and details, but I know for one, one thing you should, y'all should know, I think is, I believe it was in the nineties when she got reelected back to Congress after being away for a bit. She fought against people were trying to reform um, welfare, right? For like um, like monies for uh, like low income families, for lack of a better term. And she was against that because she wanted to protect families, children from losing benefits. You know that um, depend on aid for them to to stay together as a family, right? So that's one thing I, I would say, Calvin Kim. Yeah, and um, she was always from the very beginning when she started her career in the territorial house, 
she was always uh, for more funding for education for schools. Yeah. and you go to school right yeah yeah so she was always trying to make sure there were great teachers and the schools had everything they needed in order to have you have a great experience there and she mm -hmm. from from the, the youngest kids all the way up to kids in college so she was very much a a champion for education in general. I think that's probably really relevant to you all. Yes. Olive? She also really wanted to protect the children because she was the first one to go in a white school. Oh, well, are you talking about her college? Uh, I think so. Mm hmm what she was the first person to go to where olive a white school oh, oh i see i think you're talking oh, about never mind. That's, never mind. <laughs> she did she she did go is that um university of nebraska right the law school That's she went to bridges. never mind no it's okay olive it's mm -hmm. uh what what did happen though right is i think what you're referring to is when she did go to college she faced discrimination because of how she looked and then she fought against it, right? So I think that's maybe what you're referring to. She fought in peace. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, very good. Yes. Um, Olive, did, did you have another question that you wanted to ask? Um. What did you already know about her or did you have to learn about her for your song? I had to learn a lot, Olive. I did not know much. I knew that she was uh, in the House of Representatives. Um, I knew she was, uh, yep, I knew she existed and I know that there was a park named after her. That's about it. And I, <laughs> <laughs> And it's kind of embarrassing, but I feel like I'm not alone and I hope that that changes. So that's how I would answer that question. Thank you, Olive. Um, Jonathan, do you have another question? Mm -hmm. Besides the Title IX law, what other ways did Patsy Mink, why, what other ways is Patsy Mink important? I think, um, you know, it's funny, Jonathan, like, because these kind, what I would say is that, first of all, she was a woman in Congress, and that she was an Asian American in Congress from Hawaii. And I think the times that she served, right, were times where there was like, I think when she first got elected, um, there was like 11 other women in Congress, and they were like, they weren't, there was overwhelming majority of men. And I think it's funny because I say it's funny because I think people don't see the significance of this sometimes because it's not like a law or it's not like she won a war or something. It's, it's more subtle. And the mere fact that she was a woman, an Asian, in a time where that was just not a thing, it was just not expected, I, I should say, maybe in society for a woman to... Uh, take initiative and like open her own law practice um, or run for Congress or even president in the seventies. I think those things are important, not because it's just like, uh, oh, look, like the, uh, she's doing all the, the right things, but it's important because it broke barriers for people like us who are from Hawaii, who don't um, fit the mold, I, I'll, I'll say in certain ways and so she kind of broke it i guess if that makes sense does that make sense jonathan mm -hmm. cool thank you for your question now leah do you have another question oh i'm sorry kim uh calvin did you want to comment on that question as well um one of the fun facts about my cousin is that i believe she's the only person in the world to have worked in the territorial city, state, and federal government <laughs> from Hawaii. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
it's it's you know it's one of those things that it's a one fun fact that you can throw at people and say yeah she was the only person ever to do all yeah. of that govern in hawaii wow yes yeah i i mean i don't know a lot but like of, of about that but like i can't name anyone else and like so she had this different view of wow that's right. cool right kim did you have uh did you want to answer that question as well um yeah, no, I mean, I agree. I think, yeah, Calvin is totally right. And I think it goes to show just how dedicated she was to public service, right? It didn't really matter which level of government. And I was always struck by, you know, so she was in Congress for 12 years. She ran for Senate and lost, and then she was in the city council. And I remember when I was doing the interviews, I would ask people like, what was that like? That must've been really maybe humbling, you know, to go from the halls of Congress to, you know, the Honolulu Hale City Hall. But people across the board said, no, I mean, she she came at that job with as much energy and vision, you know, as she did to, you know, Congress. And she actually really enjoyed working in the city um, because in a way you're closer to the issues that people have, you know, like right. the day-to-day -day issues of like potholes and sewers and, and things that actually impact our daily lives. Um, and so I found that really, really refreshing that like she could work at all of those levels and she found how they were all equally important to people. And yeah, like it wasn't about like, okay, I have to get the highest office. So much, so many times I think we have politicians who are always like trying to get to the higher office and that sort of mentality. And I really saw her as just, she was just like a true public servant wherever she felt like she could best, you know, at the time, you know, um, serve the public. She was, she was ready and willing to do that. Yes, yes. Oh, for more of her ilk, public servants for public services sake. Oh. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna stop being an actor. Nalia, did you have another question? Yes, I have a question about the video. What was the hardest part of making this video? Okay, yes. So I can comment a little about it, but to tell you the truth, Nalia, it was a lot, mostly my coworkers who helped produce the film. So your mom helped with pictures and helping us give some um, notes about like what we, what she thought about it and like advice and um, from her expertise. But really as my coworkers, Matt and Eric that helped bring all the things, all the props and made the set. And I kind of just showed up in my shorts that were pink and my pink hat and was like, we, you know, I mean, we worked together to try to create the storyline and the vision of like what the pictures you saw in the video. But um, Matt has been working very, 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 very hard this whole week at the computer going like this, making sure it looked all nice and set for you guys to enjoy. So that's hours and hours of work. So, but for me, the most, the most difficult part for me was I think, you know, I, I've gotten used to film acting, but I, I like jumping around on stage. And um, when you, I don't know if you, if your mom's ever made you do this. Have you ever tried to, or do, have you ever tried to make your own movie at home, Nalia, with the camera? No. Yeah. I have <laughs> oh, you have, Jonathan? Um, so it's, a, it's kind of involved. I don't know if you know, it's a little, and you have to stand still. And you have to you have to wait for things to move around and like if there's someone's vacuuming you got to stop and wait because the microphone's going to pick up the vacuum and you don't want that in the serious scene where people are crying there's a vacuum oh i lost my i lost my kitty cat <laughs> you know it'd just be weird so anyway that's the most difficult part for me when i'm uh filming <laughs> just standing still sometimes i just want to jump around thanks for that question all of you have another question? We're gonna wrap up in a bit. This time it's a comment. Okay, go ahead. Um, I never made my movie, but I have re been recording stuff and sometimes. Cool, yeah, I think um, you should make all the things. I think you should make all the movies and be the artist. Like us artists in this panel, we are all artists here. Um, I, I wanna wrap up. Are there any last thoughts, Kim, Calvin, 
children, Keiki, that you want to share? Okay. No, I think we've we've hit everything quite well. Yes, I believe we have. I agree. I second that motion, and I move to adjourn the meeting. And I will say uh, thank you to my guests. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Calvin. Nalia, Jonathan, Olive, thank you for your time and your mana'o, your words and your thoughts. Uh, thank you, Theater Works USA. Thank you, Barbara, Brendan, the whole team for helping produce this. Um, I want to thank the Mink Ohana, the Mink family. Um, uh, thank you to my coworkers, Matt and Eric, who I just talked about for helping produce this film and uh, Eric Johnson, my artistic director for connecting me with this wonderful organization. And thank you all viewers for watching and listening and learning. And I hope you continue to think mink. All right, goodbye.